Hello guys, myself Mike and I'm back with my another video on Apache Spark interview question series and today we're gonna discuss about cache and persist with some Spark UI internal. So today I'll be covering why we need cache or persist right and uh, in which uh, scenario it will be helpful what is the difference and uh, some Spark UI internals just, just to give you the flavor of like how does Spark UI look like and how it will be helpful it will become super critical when you are debugging it uh, some application which is not like failings due to some out of memory reasons or some some other reasons right so without wasting any more time let's start a video uh, so first thing is like why we need a uh, persist of cache in which scenario it can be helpful so i just take an example for you right so let's consider we have two data frames data frame one and two and we are joining it uh, and creating a data frame three after that we need to perform three operations distinct group by and join and create data from four five six respectively so if we are not using any cache or process, right, what will happen when I um, call distinct operation, right, and create data frame 4. So when I call it or maybe do some uh, action or something, right, it will create data, it will join data frame 1 and 2 and create data frame 3 and then data 4 will be created. Well, after that, when I do group by, then again it will uh, join two data frames, create uh, data frame 3 and uh, perform um, group by and create data frame 5. And similarly it will happen on some join also let's say i'm just doing self join on data frame 3 itself so first it will join data frame 1 2 then create 3 and then data frame 6 will be created but so you can see right uh, data frame 1 and 2 are joining three times although we have already created data frame 3 once right but after that two times also we are creating it so but if we are uh, we, if we apply uh, cache or persist in data frame 3 right so it doesn't need to compute data frame 1 and 2 every time we do some operations or some transformation or action on that on top of data frame 3. That is it becomes helpful that you don't need to perform same operations again and again uh, just to compute the same data frame uh, if you're using cache because it will store that uh, df3 in the memory itself so that whenever you call a new operation or transformation it will start from there only so you don't need to recompute that thing again and again so in that scenario um, that process or cache will be helpful. So what are the differences in process in cache? Like memory only, uh, there, are there, there are five types of storage level in process, right? So that is memory only, memory and disk, memory only uh, serialization, memory and disk, disk, serialization and disk only. So first type is memory only and that is the cache. So memory only storage level of process is called cache and here data resides in memory only. So if you if, if data becomes more than the memory, then uh, it will not spill to disk. It will just uh, you uh, the Spark application has to recompute itself again whenever it, it is get uh, called. So another operation is memory and disk. So let's say you have two GB of memory and the uh, the cache or the data frame which you are doing process or something that is of three GB. So two GB of memory will be uh, two GB of uh, memory will uh, data will be reside in memory and 1 GB of data will go to disk that will the spilling will happen and the spill data will be spilled to disk and this this is the first two operations are deserialized format so if you are if you want to uh, if you are like space crunch and you want to use um, like lim uh, less space then you can use memory only serialization or memory and disk serialization so it will compact the data so it will consume less amount of space but uh, at the cost of little bit performance so the performance will be little bit uh, more uh, impacted so it may take more time but not much and the last uh, type is disk only so this disk only is like um, all the data will get stored in disk there is no data that will be stored in memory this gives you ample amount of space as no memory will be involved like uh, no ram will be involved but uh, again the Im uh, impact on performance will be there so that will take the most time out of all these five <coughs> So those are the differences and now let's come to that spark ui uh, where i'll show you some scenarios right so this is this is something uh, i've created two three lines of code right i'm just creating one rdd one to hundred and just dividing into four partition and then i'm saving into um, cam, like uh, i'm just saving into memory persisting that is storage memory and uh, storage level memory only so it will store all the data in memory and i'm just uh, collecting it so that uh, all the data will get back to driver so i just ran this command and we have ui also uh, in databricks so i have a databricks uh, plus uh, account so i just created a free account of databricks so that it will give us the free uh, one node cluster of sufficient amount like you can do all those hands on on top of that 
so <coughs> it will be free so that's why i thought it is the best uh, uh, tool to give an example or demo in that so if uh, i'll just refresh this ui so i'll show you what uh, options are available over here so we have created one job so this is job id 0 okay if i click over here then it will take me okay the number of changes so number of actions depend upon the number of pages right so number of uh, because there is only one action so there is, that is only one <coughs> stage and if i click over it so we have four executors because we have four partitions i've mentioned over here right and uh, this is the result i got it all the numbers and if you see other information over there right the status success locality because this is one node cluster, that's why driver and executor remains in the same place, right? Uh, and this is the executor ID. And you can get the duration, okay, how much time it takes, right, uh, to complete one task. So, uh, that is executor. There are other information available like GC time, min, 25% time, median, all those things. I'll cover in the next video or in some other video to give you a brief about that as well. So, let's hit on that storage button. In this, you can see, right, because I have done the process for that rdd which i've created right so that's why i just gave the name i gave the name as well deserialize so this is the name of the deserialize and uh, uh, rdd name and that storage level is also deserialized because i've used that and because i've given the four partitions so that, that there is like cache partition is four and the fraction percentage cache like sometimes what happens is let's say you have a job right and you have 4 gb of uh, memory but you cache the data of let's say 6 gb so 4 GB will be cache and um, 2 GB will not be cache in memory because of uh, uh, data spilling, right? Data will get spilled to disk or maybe the computer depending on the storage level you have selected. So in our case, it will uh, it will not spill to disk, but it will just have to recompute it. So so that from there you can see, okay, how much percent of the data get cache and how much is left. So this will become super critical when you want to uh, debug your app or uh, if your job is getting filled due to out of memory issue so you can easily get to understand from this uh, parameter and you can see okay this is size in memory 480 bytes <coughs> size on disk right how much time how much size got spilled over here and if you see right uh, like other operation other executor thing right what is there in executors you will have all those memory parameters driver memory and all those things uh, uh, over here in the environment sorry so you'll have all those uh, executor memory, how much driver memory, uh, how much uh, uh, like nodes you are executing, right? So all those things you'll get over here. Just let me show you the path, the ID memory, how much memory it is there, right? So all those things will be will you will get to know. I'll go in details in the next coming videos over here for each of the properties. But I'm just giving a hint, right? You can get, okay, this is the executor memory, this is the driver memory, this is the uh, heap size and all those things. You can get those information from the environment uh, tab. And uh, executor is like, it will give you the number of executors you have because we have only one, um, because of one node cluster. That's why it is only one. But if it is in production, then it, it may have to maybe 8, 10, 16, 20, whatever, depending on the environment we have. So just to... Uh, like uh, I have one more uh, kind of uh, same kind of code right which you can run and it will give you like more data uh, will be serialized just to show you okay next uh, next uh, kind of RDD will be created or cached right in the storage layer just a second so you can see so serialized 3 I have given the RDD name and uh, the data is like uh, more than like uh, 100,000 or something right and you can see okay 383 kb of data will be kind of got uh, cached and because i've given uh, the number of partition is eight so that's why it is like uh, eight partitions over here. so that's it for this video so if you have any doubt or maybe any questions or any any suggestions right you can put uh, put in the comments i'll try to answer all and if you like my video don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, if you have any suggestion for the next video also or you want to maybe to cover some other uh, topics as well just put in the comments thank you guys i'll see you in the next lecture bye, -bye.